There are always three groups of people, the generally wicked, the generally righteous, and then those who excel, people of Ihsan. And everyone in the group of the generally righteous should be thinking about how they can be counted amongst those who excel. And the difference between the two is how quickly you respond to the call of Allah, and then how you distinguish yourself within that deed once you get to it. So how quickly and earnestly you respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you think about the way that we're resurrected, the difference between the generally righteous, the believers, the muttaqeen, those people of piety, and those who excel, the people of Ihsan, is that one group is walking and the other group is riding. So Allah says, وَكُنْتُمْ أَزْوَاجًا ثَلَاثًا You will be divided into three groups. أَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةِ The people on the right. And how blessed are they? And then you have أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ The people on the left and how miserable are they? And then you have أَسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ The forerunners, the forerunners. سَابِقُونَ إِلَى طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا They are forerunners to the obedience of Allah in this world. سَابِقُونَ إِلَى رِضْوَانِهِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Forerunners to His pleasure on the Day of Judgment. أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ Verily, they are the ones who are closest to Allah. I remember once asking one of my teachers about the shuhada, the martyrs, and why they're not included in the hadith of the seven shaded under the throne of Allah. And he said to me, it's because the shuhada, as the Prophet ﷺ said, they're in chandeliers that are hanging from the throne of Allah. So they're in a league of their own. After them, Every believer has some shade on the Day of Judgment. We said that's with their sadaqah, with their charity. But then you have these categories of those that are shaded in the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are very specific categories and they all come under the banner of asabiqun, they're forerunners. Now the beauty of that hadith of the seven groups of people is that it covers every single person, whether you occupy a position or not, whether you are young or old, whether you are male or female, whether you are rich or poor, you have somewhere in this hadith. And that shows that you don't have to be in a special position in this life in order to have a special position in the next. You just have to be truthful and sincere in your pursuit of Allah's pleasure. The Prophet ﷺ said, there are seven whom Allah will shade on a day when there is no shade except for his. And he said, وسلم, they are a just ruler a youth who grew up in the worship of Allah, a person whose heart is attached to the masajid, two people who love each other and they meet each other and depart from one another all for the sake of Allah, a person who is tempted by someone of beauty and high status, but he guards himself saying, inni akhaf Allah, I fear Allah. And then someone who spends in charity and conceals it in such a way that his right hand doesn't know what his left hand is giving. And then someone who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private and that causes them to weep. So that covers seven deeds. You have just leadership, pious youth, love of the masajid, love of one another for the sake of Allah, resisting temptation, secret charity, and then crying out of the awe of Allah. Now there are several ahadith about people that are shaded under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than these seven. In fact, Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar rahimahullah, he wrote them in this book, Ma'rifatul Khisal Al-Mulsilati Ila Al-Dilal that these are the categories that lead people on the Day of Judgment to the shade. And almost all of them are connected to being charitable because when you're charitable, you're providing shade to someone else in one way or the other. So you have the person who is lenient with someone who owes them money, or you have someone who at the next level pays the debt of another person off, or someone who loans someone money to get them out of a cruel debt situation. All of these are specific in a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ about those who are shaded under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are some other underlying themes beside there being sabiqun, that they're all forerunners? Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, if you look at all seven of these categories, you see muhalafatul hawa, that they gave preference to their love for Allah over the pull of their lusts and desires, even when they had access to those desires. So everyone from the judge who could have wronged to the person that chose to be in a good place of worship rather than an evil place, 
to a person who preferred to use their youth for worship instead of partying, to the person who chose charity over wealth or chose secret worship over secret sin. All of them chose to contradict their desires for their love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have the second theme, which is all of them did an act of obedience to Allah. And obedience, as the scholars mentioned, is of two types. You have an act of obedience between you and Allah, and then you have an act of obedience between you and the people, also for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll also notice that the first four categories of these seven are in regards to public life. And then the last three are in regards to your private life. And what this tells us is that if you fix your externals, then your internals are going to be strengthened as well. The scholars also mentioned that like the gates of Jannah, a person who belongs to one category likely belongs to more than one. But they say, SubhanAllah, that Yusuf alayhi salam is the only man who we can confirm belong to all seven, right? If you think about Yusuf alayhi salam's position, every one of these categories fits him. And then you have the first category, which is the rarest of the categories, which is a just ruler. And the last category, which is the most common of them all, and anyone can do it, and that is al-buka' min khashyatillah, a person who cries out of their fear of Allah. You don't need power or position to cry out of your awe of Allah. And the most beautiful character is someone that includes the first and the last. And that was Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, this man who was known for being a just ruler, and he had marks on his shoulders from the charity he carried at night. And then he also had marks under his eyes from the amount of tears that he used to shed in prayer. The scholars also mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ often mentioned these seven in various orders, but he always mentioned the just ruler first. And the wisdom of that is that if the ruler is just, then the other six categories become more likely because a virtuous ruler unlocks blessings in society and encourages virtue in society. And that's why Sufyan al Rahimullah said, Sinfani, إِذَا صَلُحَ صَلُحَتِ الْأُمَّةِ وَإِذَا فَسَدَ فَسَدَتِ الْأُمَّةِ الملوك والعلماء. There are two groups of people. If they're good, everyone else is going to be good. And if they're corrupt, then the entire ummah is going to be corrupted. And he said they are the rulers and the scholars. And then you start to see how each category connects to the next in the hadith. So a just ruler, for example, he sets the tone and encourages the construction of virtuous places and ideals. And that means that young people grow up in the worship of Allah and with role models who are worshipers and environments that can nurture their righteousness. And that can't be done except through what? Except through the masajid. And Allah mentions that a hallmark of tyrants is that they destroy or they corrupt the masajid of Allah. So under the righteous, the masajid flourish. And then young people who worship Allah find the house of Allah connected to their hearts. And then what happens when they meet each other in the masajid? They start to love each other for the sake of Allah, with the masjid being the conduit for those relationships that are formed only for the sake of Allah. And then that allows the person to nurture enough faith to resist sin in private. So when they're called to temptation, they say, I fear Allah. And then that allows that person to also nurture enough faith to do good in private. So they give secret charity instead of secret sin. And that's category six. And then category seven is where all the categories meet. And that is weeping in private out of the awe of Allah. And you know, this is a category which is only between you and Allah. And anyone can strive for this, regardless of their circumstances. And if you look at the Salaf, if you look at the righteous predecessors, they were always in between these two states. يُنْفِقُ فِي النَّهَارِ وَيَبْكِي فِي اللَّيْلِ They gave charity in the day and they cried at night. And so these last two categories are constants in the life of the believer and they're connected to each other. Why? Because the best time to remember Allah is after you do an act of charity, because the Prophet ﷺ said your heart will be soft at that time. And then the best time to give charity is after you remember Allah at night because your appetite for dunya is reduced and you'll be more sincere in that act. Now imagine how it is when Allah, who is more merciful to you than your mother, sees your tears. Imagine how your mother would comfort you when she sees you crying. And remember, Allah does not make you fear Him twice. So what then of the one who shed tears out of that khashya, out of that awe of Allah? The Prophet ﷺ said that the eye that was in the cause of Allah and the eye that shed tears for Allah would not even be touched by the fire. And that's why Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma says something very powerful. He says, for me to shed one tear out of the fear of Allah is more beloved to me than spending a thousand dinars in charity. Because if I spend a thousand dinars in charity, 
I don't know if that would forbid me from the fire. But those tears between you and Allah, whether they come after a good deed or whether they come after a sin, if they were sincere, they will protect you from the heat of the sun on that day and they will protect you from the fire of Jahannam in a way that no other position could ever do. Alhamdulillah, we are happy to announce the launch of the One Islam TV app. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two new videos uploaded daily, insha'Allah. Watch videos on demand, or download videos and watch offline. No more annoying ads or pop-ups. 100% safe browsing for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest, or drive with your device switched off. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku, so you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.